Uh, we'll take the high road. We take the low road, and I'll be there before you. The high route seems the most secure. In a valley, you can be easily observed from above and led astray, but out in the hills, you can go whichever way you choose. Of course, when night falls, it may be cold and exposed up on the slopes. But no matter, this journey was never destined to be easy. You begin the climb, letting the old man's jabbering fade quickly away. The path winds upwards into the hills and into the cover of wood. The afternoon sun glints through the trees and plays tricks on your eyes. Every so often you catch a glimpse of some strange shaped animal or other watching you, only to find that it is the silhouette of branches and leaves caught at an odd angle. When I was will walk, you're starting to feel hungry. Uh, let me check. Oh, the yeah, the honey became a ration. Cool, that was converted to rations. Nice. It The game does track which rations you've got as well, actually. And if you swim, some rations get destroyed. I guess a generic meal, I don't know what that actually counts as, but if you've got, like, bread or something, bread will get destroyed when you go in the water. So, there's that. I need to have a look at that spell book, then. That's, uh, where's the, what's the, what's the new one? Because there are seven secret spells in the game. Have we not put that other page in our book yet? There are, there are seven secret spells. I know of five of them. So, this one in the first game is one I actually genuinely missed on my first run through all this. Anyway, we don't need to stop and eat just yet. No. Eating restores two stamina, and then sleeping after eating restores two stamina. So, broadly speaking, I've kind of always kind of played by the rule that you only really need to eat on a day if you're down by four stamina or more. If you uh, you ignore the rumblings of your belly and keep up your pace, the climb continues with the path twisting this way and that. The air grows cold and the sun flickers on the horizon then sets, making it hard to see your way. But the moon is full and when twilight is done, it will be, be, be bright once more. Are we up to night time already? We are. It's been night. It, actually, no. It's, has it just been night all the way through? Or does, or does this tracker not have a day-night cycle? I don't think it has a day-night cycle. The later games, this tracker has like sun and moon and stuff along the bottom and actually tells you what time of day it is. Just seems to be night down here all the time. Uh, we could make camp. It will Even if you don't take opportunities to eat when they're presented to you, you, if you go to sleep somewhere, it will always present an opportunity to eat before you go to sleep. We should make camp though. But to tie yourself out on the first day will be inauspicious. You settle down to make a camp for the night in a natural shelter provided by the roots of three gigantic intertwined trees. Your backpack will serve for a pillow and your cloak for a blanket. Before, so before settling to sleep, you check through your pack. You have three rations left. Your stomach rumbles loudly. You're not eaten all day. You lie down and try to ignore it. Ignore it. And eventually, you fall asleep. The moon is full and high in the sky when you next open your eyes. You feel warm and more cozy than you did before, as if wrapped in a gigantic blanket. There is a pain in your leg. Those guys look friendly. So you realize what is happening. A giant bat has settled on your chest and is feeding on your leg. What are the other two guys? Uh, cast a spell. Right, um... What have we got at our disposal? Not much, as long as we don't have the artifacts to make it work. We've got... Make us jig. Can I make a bat dance? Kind of free to cast, so maybe that's not a bad option to try. Gum is no good, I don't have any glue. Big is always a good option, I suppose. Um, let's try the magical flute again. I want to click on that eye, but it doesn't let me do it. PC interface is not actually as amazing as I would have hoped it would be. But you raise the spell, uh, raise the spell, and play a sweet tune on the bamboo pipe. The bat begins to hop absurdly from foot to foot, spinning around and holding out its wings. You toy with the thing for a few minutes, then grab it in one hand and lob it away into the trees where it takes flight, not to return. Smiling to yourself, you settle back down. Although that ate like three stamina of ours. Jeez. All right, let's sleep. Okay. Although sleeping gives us three stamina. Did we did we eat this morning? I guess we had breakfast, so I guess it counts. Once again, the crown fills your dreams, only now instead of being hidden away in the Mampang Fortress by the Archmage, you see it on the head of the burly villager from Kantapani. Anyone can wear the crown, he declares to you, but wearing the crown, you are no longer just anyone. And then he points a finger at you that seems to crackle with energy, and you find yourself drawn towards him, commanded to do his bidding. Suddenly you are surrounded by angry bees, you're walking towards a crack in the ground, it, sure, it seems sure to swallow you whole. 
you stumble at its edge, about to fall, and wake up. The next morning. The second day of your journey begins in the, in the morning cool. Still halfway between sleeping and walking, you feel the presence of your spirit, the vixen, close nearby. Its form has changed since you left Analand, just as you have changed in the span of a day, but it is still running beside you. In the temple, they taught you that a prayer to your spirit could heal disease, lift curses, even save you from certain death. But the spirit's not generous and, de and decline to help often. You can ask for the spirit's aid, aid by using the pray button. They don't decline to heal you, to be fair. But yeah, in the sort of the, the certain death situations, they, yeah, they, they, they can often be like, no, you, you, I'm just going to let you die now. You can ask for aid using this to this. You can ask for the spirit's aid using the pray button, as that basically unlocks that feature. Yes, yes, it has. Cool, right? The vixen is creature of high cunning and low morals. She will, she will lie, cheat, and swindle, and sidle her way out of trouble and into riches, always taking care to cover her trail. I like that spirit. I want, I want, I want to stay with the spirit. Probably going to change to the friggin' gorilla, but hey. You can feel yourself getting accustomed to the fetid air of these hills. You have now ascended several hundred feet and can expect to make excellent progress before the end of the day. As you crest the brow of a hill, you see something that makes you stop in your tracks. And to your left is a clearing, and in the clearing are several poles planted firmly in the ground. On the top of each pole is a head. Oh, yeah, we're, that might have been where we got some of our stamina, because our max increased. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so look at those heads! The heads are of all kinds and ages. Some are recently fixed, while others have decayed, and some are nothing but skulls and hair. There are human heads, goblin heads, and one or two heads of creatures you do not recognize. All have sewn up eyes and mouths. A large X painted on a rock nearby is obviously intended as a warning not to venture any further, but ahead the road forks left and right, and you cannot be sure which path you are warned not to take. The right hand path continues to climb, and the left hand path winds down the side of the hill. Right, uh, which one's the X? Probably the mine, but there's also the town over there. If we go to the mine, we, I guess we go past the Towser Ridge, which seems like someone or something lives around there, which might be interesting. Town, towns are always pretty interesting, though. But I ain't got any money to spend, so maybe we should just go to the mines. Go up. And the climb continues up the next hill for several hours until you're not far from the top. Then the faint sound of bustling activity reaches you. Tramping feet, grunting voices, and the clanking of metal against rock. There is something ahead, hidden by the ancient trees that line these slopes. Follow the sound. Follow the fun path. You leave the path and continue through the woods. A short distance onwards, you hide behind a tree and survey a clearing. A number of goblins are in the clearing, working at the mouth of an open cave. They trudge in and out of the opening, carrying large bowls in their arms, piled up with glistening rocks and dull metallic nuggets. Treasure? Let us watch them work for a bit. You stay hidden, getting a sense of the scale of the operation. There are at least 30 goblins inside the cave, each coming out every few minutes or so with a new pail of stones. There are other goblins working the clearing with hammers, smashing the rocks into small pieces, extracting metals from inside, loading them into carts, and finally pushing the carts away down a wide, wide track between the trees. It is quite some operation, but not without its weaknesses. There are too many goblins to create any kind of distraction, but they move away into the trees fairly often, and sometimes the cave is, le cave is left unguarded. Can we try to steal? We should probably get money if we steal from the bowls, I guess. I don't know what we would get if we went into the cave. But it's got to be good, right? You creep closer, moving around the side of the hill nearer to the entrance, nearer, the, nearer to the entrance to the cave. And when all is quiet, you see your chance and race across the clearing to the mouth of the cave. Into the mines! The mines of Moria. You pause a moment to the cave mouth, but no one has seen you. Oh god, do we come out of the caves further up the map? I think we do. Following the also, <laughs> the 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 ambient noises of this cave really startled the hell out of me. Then I didn't actually expect that. This is weird, echoey, drippy noise, and I was like, "What the heck is that noise?" I'm looking around me here. I should have I should have been recording face cam because that would have been interesting to watch me just startled, jump and look around. I'm like, what 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 is making noises here? Oh no, no video game. Video game makes noises. I'm so used to playing this game without sound. <laughs> uh, you pause a moment at the cave mouth, but no one has seen you. Following the passage cautiously, you move between the cool rock walls of the mine, passing and ignoring ladders that lead down into the clamoring heart of the mine, where a hundred goblins sing as they work. Eventually, you reach a junction. You can go right or go left. Where does where would right potentially bring us out? Down here, maybe? Doubt it. it wouldn't go that far. 
So I'm pretty sure that this bit's used in like the fourth game, but like one scene, not really there for much. Just flavor bits of the map. Uh, let's go right. You follow the passage to the right, it twists around, deeper into the hillside and ends in a sealed wooden door. Can try the door? You try the door, it's locked. We could always just use DOP. That'd be a pretty good way to get into it, wouldn't it? D O E Ding. You cast the spell, the door shuttles open as its lock turns over, and then the handle moves of its own accord. On your guard, you watch it swing open. The room beyond is large and appears to be a storeroom of some kind. In one corner is a pile of black rocks, and more rocks are hidden in, held in a bucket nearby. These flicker and flicker with a dull, glistening light. The most intriguing of all is what stands in the center of the space. Mechanical apparatus, perhaps a press or stone cutter, being operated by a large and powerful ogre. He does not, for the moment, seem to have noticed you. We're going to pray for healing. Just so I can top up for this, because I don't, I, an ogre might hurt. We shall watch him work. Certain he has not noticed your sudden arrival in the room, you stay in the shadow and watch as the ogre goes about his task. He's dropping stones from the black pile into one end of the machine and turning a heavy handle, crunching the rock. Something is coming out the other side. See what you'd to see what to see what you'd have to approach him as he's between you and the outlet of the machine. Guess we need to go approach him. Boldly, you step out of the doorway and into the pool of candlelight that fills the room. The ogre stops working immediately and turns to face you, growling incomprehensibly like the slug he is. You will not be able to reason with him. Cast a spell. Uh, actually, whoa, no, don't. One second. Check my inventory. I got two beeswax. Okay, okay. Cool. I hoped I would get more, actually, from an entire beehive. I thought we might get more than two beeswax out of it. I had but hoped. Okay. Uh, back to magic. Do this. Can we cast Jig? Am I going to be leaning on that loot for the entire game? I guess we can't. We can cast... Rock? No, no use. Um, K? Nope. Why, why is K even on there if there's nothing available? I mean, I guess he wants me to cast, like, Kin, but I, there's no... I can't imagine you'd be able to get a gold-backed mirror this early on in the game. Uh, walk would be a cheap way to increase my defense in the coming fights. Why is there not Raz? Why is there no Raz? Oh, that would be a really useful one. Dim would make him really stupid, but he's already an ogre. I'm not sure he's that actually intelligent. I feel like Wok might be my best bet here, actually. Or Dim. Dim's pretty expensive, though, I think, as a spell. That's... Oh, it's stupid. I don't know. Oh, it's... Right. Dim is stupidity. Dumb is clumsiness. They're very similar spells. But one costs three, one costs one. I imagine their effects are fairly similar as well. I guess I'll just go with Wok. I think? I don't know. I would like a more decisive and definitive, conclusive answer to this. But I can't see any of these options as being the decisive and conclusive action I want. What's yeah, Dim? Dim, Dim, Dim. Do I want Dim or do I want Wok? This is the real question here. Do I want to make an ogre stupid or do I want to increase my defense in the fight? I'm certain to only get one choice at this, so... Walk it is, I think. Okay, you place a coin on your wrist and cast the spell. You feel the shield expand into position. The ogre will not even be able to see it. You're not a moment too slow either. The ogre is upon you. So... At a rough estimate, I think he hits harder than me. I would suggest. So... I can, I can either let him have it... And let him have what for and hope he doesn't try and let, let me have what for. Or we can play it cautiously and defend. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go aggressive. Oh, Christ. Ouch. Minus four. Uh, huge beast. The ogre moves with surprising speed. Its hammer swings like an execution sword. Taking a chance, you lever your sword for its thick neck and brings it down. It, as it brings its hammer down with full force towards your skull. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Raise its hammer up across its body defensively. Oh, it's defending? Yab. Aha. One damage. Poke. Doing your courage, you move in, aiming to trap the ogre against the cave wall. You chase the ogre with a passing blow. It blocks your blow with his hammer. 
deep set stupid eyes are watching you closely, not wanting to take a risk. Light swipe. Yeah, good. Two damage. You strike again, you wound the ogre with a worrying cut, hoping to make it waste its energy defending. The ogre turns away as though not seeing the blow would stop it landing, but then you see its hide is like tough leather and you can barely scratch it. It staggers against the cave wall, sniffs the air. Uh, let's go a little more on this one, I think. Okay. Two. Fine. You lunge forward again, moving swiftly, you aim for its heart. The ogre steps awkwardly aside. The ogre stumbles, crash suddenly crashing into the machine, which almost buckles under the weight. Cautious but angry, it stomps the heel with earth with one heel, growling. And... Oh, crap. It's only one. Okay. You attempt an attack and suffer for it. The ogre lashes out with his hammer, the blow knocking your... Low knocking your shield back, almost taking the top of your head clean off. You're caught off balance, you're dazed. It growls at you. Defend. Yeah, I couldn't have stopped that one. That one's... Oh, interesting. I guess... I don't think I ever really particularly used walk, but I guess walk means... It didn't stop me from that four blow at the start, but it means that if I... If I get a good defend against it... It reduces damage to one, I think. Uh, and if I get a full defend against it, it reduces damage to zero. Pretty cool. Uh, the creature doesn't know what happened when it hits my shield. So now we're going to stab it. But, oh, come on. One damage. I'm taking a chance you move forward. Moving quickly, you go straight um, go a lunge, straight lunge for his eye. The ogre defends staunchly. The ogre howls in rage and fear. It's a dumb creature and can't understand what's happening to it. Enraged but wary, it pulls the rock with one enormous foot, preparing to swing. Defend! No damage. Correcting a storm, you raise your invisible shield and the ogre swipes his terrible hammer. You catch the impact on the shield. Smelling your fear, it stomps the rock with one heel. Bam. Three damage. Uh, five stamina lost. Rough going. I, I said I would probably redo battles and battles are... Battles are one of the easiest places to get your ass killed. So I will give that one a go. Okay. So bam. 9.5. Can't defend against that, but I can defend against that. Now, it's... Okay, so it's going to defend now, so we just go with the jab. Jab, jab, jab. Cool. Okay, now it doesn't want to take a risk. Recharge, 0.8. Two damage. Cool. Shouldn't have done anywhere near that much power. But, cut. Four point... Ouch! That's not a good one. I'll take the two damage, though. Okay, defend. That's the five. Mostly unhurt. Now we're doing nothing. Sniffs the air. Sniffs the air is a good opportunity to go for a 6.7. Cha-cha! The ogre stumbles, crashes into the machine, and we follow up with a cut. A deep cut. Two damage is alright. I'll take two damage for a fight. You lunge forward, moving swiftly, you aim for his heart. You swing again, and the sword cleaves into the ogre's side. He gurgles unhappily as he slumps to the floor. You breathe a sigh of relief. You're still alive! Two stamina lost, skilled sword play. Thanks, it only took me two attempts. While the dying ogre heaves his last breath, you investigate the room. You'll search the table. You look through the heaps of rocks on the table, see if any catch your eye, but they all seem fairly ordinary. We shall search the corners of the room. You go into the corners of the room, you do a careful sweep. After a few minutes, you come across some, something soot-coloured but solid. Ra wiping it with your tunic, you find this is a large gem, an emerald about the size of your fist. It could be good for trade around the value of ten gold pieces. You place it carefully into your bag. Okay. Do I actually have to trade it? I think I do. So I was like, does I, I was about to make some snarky comment about how we can just chip off bits of emerald and give them to people, but no, no, we actually straight up need to sell that to somebody for 10 gold pieces. Right on the machine then. Going over to the enormous machine, you try cranking the handle to see what happens, but you simply don't have the strength to make it move. Following the tubes and shoots the machine, you discover a second large gem, which you take. You search the room thoroughly now, it's time to be going before someone comes to find the ogre. You head back to the fork in the passage. The sunlight from outside is very tempting. I got two gems? Oh man, I want to use big or something to crank the handle of that. I thought that would be an option. Oh, I guess we're in a cave. Can we... Actually, yeah. That's a fine question. How the heck did we cast a spell in there? Because we can't see any stars. Or anywhere that you're allowed to cast spells indoors in this game actually kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, no, I don't want to rewind. I want to go that way. The passageway continues until you reach a large stone, large stone cut door blocking your way forwards. For mine, this place seems well built up. Perhaps it will serve as a camp if war comes. Also, thinking about uh, using walk as a spell, I lost my gold piece when I cast that. There are a few instances later on in the game where 
you disable other spells that are based around walk and you always get the coin back at the end of it you're like oh you stopped walk from working so you pick up the coin off the floor that fell to the ground after the spell finished it just kind of seems like the it's, it's almost treated as though the coin acts as a focus for the spell but isn't explicitly consumed in the spell it's just required to be there for the spell to work you can have it back once you're done i lost that gold there that that went Master Ray continues until you reach a large stone cut door blocking away, and we shall try the door handle. You try the door, it opens, the room beyond is dirty with subtle mines, so it could almost be a pit filled with night itself, with crystals in the rock for stars. In the far wall you can just make out another door leading deeper into the mine. But the middle of the room is a, a t but the middle of the room is a table at which a large filthy goblin is sitting. He raises his head as you enter and smells the air. Perhaps he was, perhaps he's almost blind from being so underground so long.